Hey y'all, welcome back to my YouTube channel. My name is ZW Buckley and today I am going to change your Ableton Live workflow forever. Seriously. I have been using and teaching Ableton Live professionally for nearly a decade now, and this is literally one of my absolute favorite things to teach students. If you struggle with keeping your productions organized, you're going to need this. If your production is filled with a ton of half-used tracks that you're afraid to delete because you might use them later, you're going to need this. If you are terrified to experiment because you don't want to lose what you already have, you are going to to need this. What I'm going to teach you today is the difference between live sessions and live projects, and I'm going to show you practical ways in which that knowledge changes truly everything. Let's jump in. So when most producers think of their Ableton Live project, they think of this file right here, the good old dot ALS file. I'm sorry, but this is wrong, and this is why your life is filled with pain. Your Ableton project is the folder that this file is contained within alongside your samples, backup, and Ableton project info folders. So what exactly is this file here? This is a .als file, and this is called an Ableton Live session. And so what is the difference between a project and a session? A session is a specific instance of your project. Most Ableton Live users that I have taught don't know this because they use just a single instance of their project for the entire time they're producing a song. So it becomes very easy to conflate the two together. But a live project can contain multiple sessions. And that is the knowledge that can change your workflow forever if you know what to do with that knowledge. Lots of productions go through multiple distinct stages. You've got your initial sketch, vocal recording, instrument recording, production, sound design, vocal production, mixing, mastering. They all can add up really quite quickly. And some of those stages, like sound design, can be really quite messy. You can use a different session for each of those within your project. Now, I know you might be thinking, ZW, that sounds really nice and everything will be neatly organized, but then I have to export stuff to drag into a main production and that just seems so tedious. Well, guess what? You don't if you understand the difference between sessions and projects. Let me show you. So I have this song that I'm slowly working on and here's the drop. As a quick note, if you're like, whoa, that is a very cool sound. What are you doing there? Click this card, watch this video. I explained to you how I did it a few months back. Now on the left-hand side of the browser, if I go all the way down to places, one of the default places that shows up is current project. When I click on current project, it shows everything in the project folder, including every session or .als. And any of these sessions can be expanded. And there you see every single track in that session. And so this is a session in which I'm doing all of my sound design. And so in the sound design session, I was working on a pad for the drop. Now I can just click this, drag it, and drop it in. There aren't sampling tracks. There aren't a ton of messy ideas. I can just grab and drag the finished product in. And now if I continue from where I left off, we're going to hear this really cool pad come in halfway through. When you take advantage of sessions nested within a shared project folder, you can easily and effortlessly move things between productions. And that allows you to really compartmentalize your workflow to keep things clean, neat, and tidy. You can also use sessions as a form of manual version control. I do this all the time so that I can always step back when I need to if I have to grab something from a previous session. It gives me a lot of freedom and comfortability to just delete things that I feel like I'm not using knowing that they aren't gone forever. So whenever I open up a session to work on it for the day, I do a file save as with the date and the time. This gives me complete permission to try out interesting ideas because I can always 
always jump back a few sessions if I feel like I've headed down the wrong path. It also saves my ass when I need to make changes later down the line. Let me show you exactly what I'm talking about in a song that I'm working on currently. So here's another song that I am working on. And back around February, these are the vocals that I had. Every speck of dust, every grave sand, every molecule can never hold its shape. Every speck of me, every inch of you falls apart before it finds its right place. Now, in the moment, I just improvised those vocals. I liked what I had, but I hated that I used the word speck at the start of both phrases. I wanted a different word. Now, I tried to just record new vocals right in. Now, the thing is, this song started life as a much slower idea. And part of what makes these vocals sound interesting to me is the way that I've sped them up and I have warped them. But because I use manual version control, I was able to step back to that original idea. All I had to do was, once again, go down here to my current projects, select the initial idea, reopen it, and then I did a file save as to this vocal re-record. And I recorded a new set of vocals at the older, slower tempo. Every speck of dust, every grain of sand, every molecule can never hold its shape, every piece of me. And if I now open up then the session I'm currently working in, I expanded the vocal re-record session, grabbed the vocals, and I dragged them into this production, which I then now have the right vocals. Every speck of dust, every grain of sand, every molecule can never hold its shape. Every piece of me, every inch of you falls apart before it finds its right place. Depending on how long I've been working on a song for, I can end up with a ton of extra sessions in my production folder, but that is fine. It doesn't eat up a ton of extra storage. Because they're in the same project folder, they share one samples folder instead of duplicating the samples folder over and over again. And each of these .als files are like 300 kilobytes. So you can have a ton of these without actually even eating up a couple of megabytes. So many of the workflow problems that I've helped students address over the years are a direct result of resource mismanagement. The key to fixing that is understanding the differences between projects and sessions in Ableton Live. This approach to project management puts everything in its right place reduces friction and sets you up for long-term success. If you already do this, then you know how valuable it is. And if you've learned this now for the first time, then I'm very excited for you and how quicker you're going to become as a producer as a result of this. As always, thank you so much for watching. Please consider commenting, liking, and subscribing. I'm working really, really hard to grow this channel to 10,000 subscribers by the end of 2025. And you all have loved my video about complex drum programming, and it has renewed my vigor for this goal. I really appreciate it. So thank you all so much, and until next time.